Hello again, my name is Rodney Reynolds and welcome to another video review. Today I'll be looking at the ABIT AT7 Max 2 motherboard. What is included in this package are all the necessary serial ATA connections as well as a cable. And also there's two ATA-133 cables, a floppy cable, and you also get two extra USB ports. Now this goes actually plugged directly into the motherboard. You get some tie-downs, the RAID drivers on a floppy disk, also on the CD some software, as well as drivers, the manual, and the motherboard. If you want to use the serial ATA cable on a regular hard drive, that's not going to be a problem because they have included this adapter right here. I'll show you how this is installed. This first of all goes into a regular standard ATA 100 or 133 hard drive. You plug it in the back like so. Then you make the necessary power attachments. You just plug it right here as well as into the back of the hard drive and then this goes into your power supply. Then connect the serial ATA cable into the back right here and then connect the other part directly into the motherboard. This motherboard is based upon the VIA KT400 chipset. Let me now just go through and detail some of the key features about this motherboard. Right here is where you install the AMD CPU, and also you can install up to four banks of DDR memory. Here are the IDE controller, as well as the floppy controller. Also you have High Point 37 four RAID controller on the board. And right here is where you install that serial ATA cable. You've got two connections here on the board for that. Also five PCI slots and one AGP slot. There are one, two, three, four fan headers on the board. That's places to plug extra fans. And also you're going to need an AMD approved power supply to plug into this board. There are two power connections, one right here and one right here. Right here is where you plug your PS2 keyboard and mouse into. There are also six USB 2 ports on the board and also this adapter will give you a total of eight. There's a four right here and two more USB 2 ports over here. Onboard firewire, there's two ports right here. Audio optic out right here. There's also 5.1 channel audio on board as well as a LAN port. Let me now touch upon some of the key features within this particular BIOS. First, I'll look at the advanced BIOS features. And in this particular BIOS, you've got things like the first boot, second boot, and third boot devices, which you can actually select and change like so. Within the advanced chipset features of this BIOS, you can go and change the different memory clocks, the drive control, the AGP aperture size, and so on. And also further down here, you can see you have control over the system BIOS being cacheable, enable or disable that, or the video RAM cacheable, enable or disable that. Now, if I go back here to the top, to the memory, you've got a few memory timings here. You can go by an SPD option, or you can do a turbo or an ultra, or you can go manual where you can set all the settings manually. Within the AGP and P2P bridge control area of the advanced chipset features, you can change a different AGP size, as well as the fast write, you can enable or disable that, and as well as a feature here called enhance AGP performance, and you can again enable or disable that. Also within the advanced chipset features part of this BIOS, you can go and adjust the CPU and PCI bus control. Within the integrated peripherals part of the BIOS, you can go in here and enable or disable the different channels, for instance the IDE channels, onboard everything really, the onboard LAN, the onboard RAID, the onboard audio, the onboard USB, and so on and so forth. And within the PC health status of this BIOS, you can go in and view the different temperatures. The system temperature, the CPU surface temperature, the CPU core temperature, all the different fan speeds, and all of the different voltages. Also within here, you've got options to set a CPU shutdown temperature, as well as a CPU warning temperature, and also you can enable or disable shutdown if the CPU fan was to fail. Next, on to the Soft Menu 3 setup. Now, this is my favorite place in the BIOS because you can overclock your CPU in here. You can adjust the front side bus, in this case, all the way up to 250 megahertz. Right now, I'm running a system at 213 megahertz. Also, you have a few ratio options here. These are good because if you have a high front side bus, it's not going to really stress out the AGP and the PCI bus. And also right down here, you have the multiplier factor, which goes all the way up to 22.5. 
If you multiply, for instance, 7.5 times 213, you're going to get around 1600 megahertz. Also further down here, we have the CPU voltage, which goes all the way up to 2.325 volts. And also you can adjust the DDR voltage, or the memory voltage, all the way up to 3.25 volts. The Sci Software Sandra CPU result is 4,430. The CPU Multimedia result is 8,838. The Memory result is 3,035. And finally, the Hard Drive result is 41,331. The PC Mark 2002 results are the CPU score is 4,932, the memory score is 4,176, the hard drive score is 1,099. The 3D Mark 2001 second edition result is 9,458. These are the following Quake 3 Arena demo settings. A video mode of 1280 by 1024. The color depth is 32 bit. Gmesh detail is at high. The texture detail is at max. The texture quality is 32 bit. And the texture filter is trilinear. And the result is 138.5 frames per second. These are the following Comanche 4 demo benchmark settings. A screen resolution of 1280 by 1024. The bit depth is 32. Texture compression is checked. I've disabled the V-Sync and hardware shaders are checked. And the result is 31.73 frames per second. In the XS Mark, I will be using all the default settings except for a screen resolution of 1280 by 1024 at 32 bit and the result is 5739 and the Unreal Tournament 2003 results at a resolution of 1280 by 960 are the flyby is 124 and the bot match is 44 this motherboard is fantastic at overclocking it's stable and reliable and let's not forget it has all those onboard things onboard RAID, onboard FireWire, onboard USB 2, onboard audio, onboard LAN and so on overall this is a kick-ass product again my name is Rodney Reynolds and this has been another video review be sure to check back very soon I will have a brand new one for you then also pop into my website at www.3dgameman.com and while you're there you can go and register if you haven't already registered registration is completely free until the next time take care